Hey everyone, back with another review and this time I want to have a look at this here Messer, the Hans Thalhofer by MacArmor. Before we get to that though, let's get the formalities out of the way real quick. So, uh, first and foremost, paid for these with our own money. We had four of them. MacArmor was not aware that there was going to be a review. Then the structure of the video is going to be the same as always. I will have my talking part first. I'll go through the ordering process, um, the stats of what we have here, and then you know just things I noticed, how I like it, pros, cons, watch outs, stuff like that. There will be a picture at the end with the stats, so you can stop and look at those. And some more pictures that you know just highlight some things and you can see it in different angles. Um, there will probably not be a video with free play footage at the end simply because we already published that and if you want to see it in motion um, just check out that. I'll put the link to that down in the description which is also where the timestamps will be as per usual so should you want to jump around you can. Okay with that all out of the way Hans Thal of the Messer by MacArmor. So I saw these on Facebook and was quite interested. I mean, I'm, I'm always looking for, you know, new and interesting um, training material. Uh, and there was like an idea behind those that I quite like that I'll get to later. Ordering process was really quite nice, really comfortable. So I didn't go directly through the web page, which I could have done, but I contacted them on Facebook because what they just showed in the pictures is this messer with red grip band and uh, that of course is their general color scheme just black and red but it doesn't quite work out for our club colors so I just contacted them and asked them like hey you know can you do that with a blue grip and they said yes certainly um, contacted me after a while asking which color specifically gave me some options and I picked this because it kind of fits what our club colors actually are and that was really nice so I went to the web page ordered left a note that this is you know the blue one and I ordered them early December I ordered them on Monday I got a note that they were done on Wednesday and I had them in my hand on Friday which really is kind of an insane turnaround time the web page is great it's very comfortable so that is pretty much flawless as far as I'm concerned. Great service. They're really nice to talk to as well. So thumbs up. Great service. So stats wise, what is it what we have here? Well, it's, you know, <laughs> a pretty moderate Mesa. I quite like it. It's uh, 87 centimeters long overall. Of that 18 centimeters, the part that you can grip is the grip and there's a bit more of the pommel to it. It's uh, 64 centimeters of blade you have a cross that is 13 centimeters across and then a nagel which sticks out 5.5 centimeters one thing i quite like if you've seen more messer reviews of me you know i'm a sucker for that it's a proper nagel which is nice um, and it's i think glued and hot welded through so this is really really quite sturdy really nice um, when it comes to the grip profile, uh, there's a bit of a taper to it. It's a bit thicker at the end here. It starts at 2.7 centimeters and then goes out to three. The uh, thickness of it is just the same all around. It's two centimeters, just start to end. Same um, thing with the blade, basically. So the distal taper is really just like 1.5 centimeters beginning to end. Just it's all the same. There's a bit more going on with the uh, taper of the blade there is ever so subtly it's getting thinner it starts at 3.7 centimeters then goes down to 3.2 in the middle and then like 2.8 before it really starts rounding off to the point which in profile is a bit pointy i probably would have liked it to be a bit more rounded but then again it is one point centimeters wide so uh, i think they get away with it also since Static, it's, it's, I don't actually know what material it is. I, I seem to remember that it is the same material that cutting boards are made of, but honestly, I have no idea what those are made of. So some form of plastic, quite sturdy. 
um, but that means that if you want it to be rounder it's really not that hard to do it yourself so that's fine uh, there is some flex going on more than i thought to be honest um, which is also quite nice still with messers you always have to take care when you thrust but um, it, it actually is nicer with them than, than i thought it would be you know just given the length of it the really interesting part about this messer which um, made me interested in them is that they are really light this comes in at 390 grams roundabout but the point of balance is really rather far out at 16 16.5 ish centimeters and that is a result of the geometry of the whole thing like no distal taper but on purpose if you look at the other stuff that uh, Mac Armor does, they don't shy away from complex forms where it's necessary. Um, but this here was done on purpose. Um, if I understood them correctly, the idea was to make something that is very light, but still has a good presence to it, that still feels, for lack of a better word, messery. And they achieved that, or tried to achieve that, by making it light, but rather far out, Point of balance. Now a messer doesn't need a far out point of balance to feel good or be authentic. There's lots of variety out there really, just many many different forms, shapes, weights, weight distributions etc. But what this does in this year is that I was surprised, you know, just picking it up by how light it was but how much presence it still had. Which was honestly nicer than I thought thought something that only weighs 390 grams could be so as far as that experiment goes i think they were really fairly successful um, they handle nicely so what i did with them we did some free play you can check out the video um, i used it in dry handling i used it for some partner exercises and I think this really does have a place in training but I would also say that it comes with a certain amount of watch outs to it so it, it it's it, it does have a specific place as far as I'm concerned so as I said I like it I like how it handles and I like that it is light and yet still has good presence to it um, where I can definitely see this, for example, is if you have someone who you want to be able to train for a while, do some partner exercises, uh, but maybe isn't quite all there yet, fitness-wise. You know, we all have to start somewhere, and it's sometimes a problem when you have someone who can swing the messer around for five minutes and then is just done. Um, I certainly still have those days you know ups and downs this one in that regard is nice because it is very light so you can use it for a good amount of drilling um, I also like it in partner exercises because same reason you can do a lot of exercises you can do repetitions 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 and still won't get too tired because it is fairly light and yet it still feels good because of the far out PUB that being said it still is a synthetic messer um, and that means that it is fairly slippery really that is just you won't necessarily have good feel in blade contact I mean that can happen with steel too or aluminium but just yeah this material whatever it actually is is it, it is quite slippery so you won't necessarily have a good opportunity to learn how things feel. For that, steel, I'd say, is still, you know, the way to go, followed by aluminium, probably. Um, but the bigger problem or the bigger watch out that you really have to keep in mind is that in free play, you can fence proper messer with these. But you have to want it and that's a bit of a problem or 
it could be a problem if you don't quite know what proper Messer is yet. And that is because these are fairly light, 390 grams, and they are plastic, which means that when they hit, there's a good amount of bounce when the blades collide. Uh, that is less of a problem I found with, for example, black fencer nylons, because there's just more mass behind them, more weight. These are fairly light, so there's more bounce, which if you think about something like, for example, Zornhau Ort, just, you know, cut in line, claim the center line, and then work in the bind, thrust, whatever you want to do, that is sometimes fairly hard to do if the cut bounces back and then you have just more room between the blades than you want to. And if you want to still go into the bind and work in the bind and your partner wants that as well, it can still work out perfectly fine. But, you know, if your partner doesn't want to or if you don't quite know how to do it yet, um, it might give a bit of a wrong feel. Still, in, you know, non-dynamic things like solo exercises, I quite like this and I also quite like it in less dynamic partner exercises because it's generally more controlled than anyway so the bounce comes less into play but in free play I'd say that I like it and if you want to fence properly with them they are a nice tool for that because again light you can play for a long time big edge to it 1.5 centimeters which means that you get away with comparatively little gear still, lighter gloves, which is always nice, which means your hand has a higher chance of remaining flexible and you can do all the things you want to or need to do with your hand, you know, grip-wise. So I, I think they are really nice, but I'd say um, they, they are not the end-all be-all. Um, they have a place, but you should check uh, if, if that is what you if, if that is what you are looking for. If you're looking for a steel replacement, I mean that's generally not easy to recommend anything in that regard. Um, but if you're looking for something light to maybe give beginners for solo exercises or partner exercises, or you want something like that for yourself, then that is really something good, I'd say. But I don't want to just leave you with my opinion. Um, I'm actually going, going to do a first and summon Ulrich to the whole thing, so he can give his um, opinion as well, because uh, as far as Messer goes, he's actually way more of the right person to give his opinion on that, because he does the Messer training in our club. I do Messer as well, of course, but um, his take um, is also something that I think is worth hearing. So just going to do editing magic and pull Ulrich into this. Hi everyone, I got summoned. So Peter already gave you quite an extensive and nice overview um, about this little tool we have here, which is great. So I'm just trying to throw in some of my takes on the points Peter already was talking about and maybe give you like an addition or two on uh, some points where Peter has, hasn't gotten that much into detail. So let's get into it. The flex uh, Peter already showed you is all right for the material it's made of. It's, it's better than most of the black fencer messes I've handled so far, but it's still not as good as um, like a good steel messer would be. So that's something to keep in mind. Also the PUB Peter and me had a discussion about the other day and um, I understand how the POB came to be where it is. I understand the um, why the manufacturer, Mac Armor, would do it like this and what they tried to achieve with it. And I think it worked. However, just one point I want to um, I want to get out there is that the further you draw your POB to the point of your tool, there is a certain risk in there for over committing because it tends to draw you into your strikes, which isn't much of a problem with this specific messer because it is quite light overall. It doesn't weigh as much. Um, however, if it would get heavier, 
you just have to keep in mind that you don't follow as much into your strikes with your whole body because over committing basically is not a thing we want to do too much yes so it is quite slippery slippery in the bind um, I feel like when it comes to working in the bind like winding and getting your point in there um, you kind of need to really want it and really want lean into it so um, that is also one of the points about over committing which I just said before that you just have to keep in mind and be aware of it does bounce um, when you fence with two of these against each other we've had I guess once or twice the situation where like a cut came in and it bounced off and landed on the forearm or on the hand which is not like too bad it just happens so um, that's also something to keep in mind but overall it does have a nice flow to it I quite like handling it because you can just play around every time you want and um, it's not a big problem so it's, it's, it's nice playing around with it and that's basically what I do all the time I just have it lying here at home and whenever I feel like I grab it and I just go around or two um, out of our regular training so that's nice I also see it working quite well and have seen it working quite well in our training in partner exercises um, especially I would recommend using it when someone is new to historical fencing and they don't have yet the endurance or the arm um, strength for handling a more heavy heavier steel messer for one, two or three hours in a row. So that's where I definitely can see it. Um, and also in a scenario which I like to describe as friendly technical low gear fencing. So just put on a mask, put on some light gloves and um, go at it with each other. Just um, keep in mind not to overdo it. And I think this will be um, great fun to use. So that's basically what we did in the video we um, uploaded the other day. So if you haven't seen it, make sure to check it out if you want to see how these things behave in a live scenario. All right, that's it. So see you next time. Cheers.